Hello everyone, welcome to episode 1 of my new series, Remake, where we take concepts from games and remake them, but in a simplified manner. Recently, I found myself playing and enjoying Factorio, a logistics and crafting game that uses belts to transport items, so I thought what better for the first tutorial than creating a simple belt system. Now that we know what we're going to be making, let's find out how. A belt system or conveyor system takes an item and moves it to the next belt. Now there's many ways of doing this with varying complexity but the simplest method that I found is to use ray casts. Take this example of a belt system. We can cast a ray in a specific direction relative to the belt's position and check if there is a belt present. If a belt is present we know that the belt that we need to move an item to is that belt. That's the basic principle that we'll be applying to our code. Now that we know what we are building and how we're going to build it, let's get to the code. Now within Unity, the first thing we want to do is create a scripts folder. Now within the scripts folder, we need to create two more folders. One to hold our belt and our belt item scripts and another to hold our belt manager. Now that we have our folders defined, Let's create our scripts. In the belts folder, create a script called belt. Followed by another script called belt item. Now these are all the belt scripts that we need. Now we need to create a manager. So in the manager folder, now we have all our scripts defined. Our belt, our belt item, and our belt manager. Now, within IntelliJ, we have our belt, belt manager, and belt item scripts open. Let's start off by defining our belt item script. This belt item needs to hold the object, the actual game object that we're moving. And we can assign this as a public variable that we can adjust and amend in the inspector itself. But we also need it to be public because our belts will be dependent when moving this item around. So we can define a public game object called item. Now, since this belt item script will only ever be attached to the game object that we want to be a belt item, we can take the game object that this script lives in and attach it as the item itself. So let's create an awake method. In this awake method, we can simply say item is equal to the game object that this belt item script is attached to. Now that's all that we need for our belt item script. Let's move on to the belt manager. Now when I think of a belt manager, the first thing that comes to my mind is the belt manager should control the speed of all the belts. So let's create a float called speed and assign it a value of two. Now we have our belt item and our belt manager scripts defined and created let's move on to our belt script. For the belt script, the first thing that we're going to want to do is define a few variables. The first is a static integer that will be our belt ID. Now, we're doing this so that if there is ever an issue or a problem or we need to debug, we'll know exactly which belt the issue has occurred on. Now we need a variable called belt in sequence now that will be the next belt that this belt is attached to. We also need a belt item, the belt item that this belt will hold. And we need a boolean is space taken. Now we'll use this for our belt queuing because we don't want to move an item onto this belt if this belt's space is currently occupied. And lastly, we need a reference to our belt manager. Now that's it for our variables. Let's create the methods that we'll need. First and foremost, we need a get item position, which will return a vector three. Now this vector three, when we call it, will be the position of where we want the item to move to. So this belt 
will get the item position of the next belt and move the current belt item to that next belt. Now this method needs to be public so that when we go and look into our next belt, we're able to grab that position. We also need an enumerator called start item move. Now this will be the functionality that actually moves visually the item from one belt to the next. And lastly, we need a method called find next belt, which will return a belt. And this method will be the one that shoots our ray casts out and finds the belt that's the neighbor of this one, but with a specific direction. Now, before we go to define these methods, let's firstly define our start and update functions. So what we want our start function to do is check if we've accidentally assigned a belt into our belt in sequence. If we have, we want to null it. And now that we've made sure that the belt in sequence, our next belt is nullified, we can find the next belt. Now, one other thing that we want to do is we need to use our belt ID. So we want to change this game object's name to something like belt and the belt ID. But every time we spawn a belt, we want the static integer to increment. Now that's it for our start function. Let's move on to our update function. Now in this update function, the first thing we want to do is check whether the belt in sequence is equal to null. If it is null, we want to find a next belt. Now the reason that we have this in our update function is so that when you create your games with this implementation, um, you will have some sort of mechanism where the player is able to place belts. Now what this allows is when you place the belt, the belt will try to capture the next belt. Now the next thing that we need to check is we need to check if this belt currently holds a belt item and if that belt item has a value. So we can say if belt item not equal to null and belt item dot item not equal to null what we need to do is we need to start our coroutine which will actually move the item because we know that an item is currently on this belt that's all that we need for our update function now let's go ahead and define our get item position now what this method will do is it will take the current position that the belt is on it will add some padding to the y axis so that when the object is moved across it doesn't intersect with the belt so firstly let's add a padding value now bear in mind this padding value will be different for everyone and it's all dependent on the size of your belt item itself now if you have a very short belt item you will most probably need to reduce the padding whereas if you have a very tall padding you most probably need to increase this padding and what we also need to do is we need to get the position of this game object now what we can do is we can return a new vector 3 now we can pass in our position the x axis since we're not amending this we can pass in our position the y axis adding in our padding since this is the value that will control how far away the belt item itself will be from the center of the belt and we need to pass in our position dot z axis now that's our get item position method defined now before we touch the start belt move i think it's worth defining our find next belt method now what this method will be responsible for is defining a direction that the ray will shoot creating that ray then checking if we've hit another belt if we have, we'll return that belt back. So firstly, let's get the transform of this current belt. Let's define a raycast hit, which will hold our hit data. Now let's define a direction that the ray will emit towards. In this case, we have forwards. And now we can define our ray 
Now, this ray needs to be emitted from this current belt towards the direction that we've defined, which in this case is forward. With that, we can now create an if statement, which defines the ray cast itself. So with the ray cast, we need to pass our ray. Our output will be going to our hit variable. And for the distance, we can simply set it as one because realistically, the belts will never be so far away from each other. But if you have a situation where you do need the belts to be very far away from each other, then you can simply amend this distance itself. Within this ray cast, create a belt variable called belt. And this belt will be the belt component of whatever was hit by the ray cast. Now, before we do anything with this information, we need to check whether the belt that we're trying to grab from whatever the ray is hitting is equal to null or not. So we can say if belt is not equal to null, then we want to return that belt. And what happens if we don't find any belts? Then in that case, that's fine. We'll just return a null because no belt actually exists where we're trying to find the next one. And that's our find next belt method defined. Let's move on to the start belt move. Now, first and foremost, what we need to do is we need to make sure that the space that we're currently on, the belt that we're currently on, its space is taken. So we need to set it to so. So we can say is space taken is equal to true. Now, there's a few things that we need to check. Firstly, we need to make sure that the belt that we're currently on, its item is not equal to null. And we need to make sure that the next belt or the belt in sequence is also not equal to null. But there's one last thing that we need to check. We need to make sure that the next belt's space is not taken. Now that we have all our checks, we need to get the position of where we're going to take the current item and move it to. Now this position will be our next belt's item position. Now that we're actually moving the object from the current belt to the next belt, we need to make sure that the next belt's space is taken. So we can say belt in sequence dot is space taken equals to true. Now, since we're going to be working with vector three move to boards, we need to define a variable that takes into account the speed and is multiplied by the time dot delta time so that we get smooth movement. We can say var step equals to underscore belt manager dot speed times by time dot delta time. Now we need a while loop. Now this while loop will run until the item that we're moving its position is not equal to the position that we're moving to. So this while loop will continue to run until the item that we're moving reaches its destination. Now in our while loop, we can add the logic that will actually move the item itself. So for this, we'll take the belt items position and we'll move it to our two position. So our next belt's position. And while this is running, since this is a coroutine, we want to return null until we break out of this loop. And now that we've broken out of our loop, there's a few things that we need to change around. Now that we've moved the item, the current belt shouldn't have any items on it, right? So we can say is space taken equals to false. We also need to get the next belt and assign it the belt item that was on this belt. So we can say belt in sequence belt belt item equals to belt item and because this belt no longer has a belt item we need to set the belt item to null now that's pretty much it we've defined all of our methods our get item position our start belt move and our find next belt so what we can do now is head over into unity now in unity the first thing that we're going to want to do is create a new empty game object called belt manager and what we'll do is we'll attach our belt manager script. Now, lastly, what we need to do is we need to create the belt item and the belts themselves. Now to save time in this tutorial, I've already created these belts. And what I'll do is I'll package up this whole project 
and I'll add it as a unity package in the description below. Now how I've made these belts is just three blocks of cubes, one to be the base, and then a left arrow and a right arrow. And once you've created your belts themselves, what you need to do is you need to add the belt script to them. And you'll see that you have these references, belt in sequence, belt item, and is space taken. Now these values should all be set to null and is space taken as false. Now lastly, what you will need to do is you'll need to create your belt item itself. Now for the belt item, all I've done was created a 3D cube, scaled it down a little bit. And once you have that done, you need to add the belt item script to the belt item itself. Now what I've done for the purposes of this tutorial is I've pre-made a belt system. Now you can see that this belt here will grab this belt, this belt will grab this belt, and on and on and on. And this is how you're able to have these turns. Because this belt grabs this belt, and this belt grabs this belt, you essentially create a corner piece for yourself. So now to actually get an item to move down this belt, what we can do is we can take our belt item, place it on any one of these belts. Let's go with this first one here. Click on this first belt. And what we'll need to do is we'll need to take this belt item object and assign it as a belt item in our first belt. So if I look through the hierarchy, I can see that belt item is here. So if I click and drag into the belt item, click play, ah, we have an error. And that's because in the script itself, in the start function, we don't go and find the belt manager. So it's throwing an object reference because we're trying to access the belt manager, but we don't know where it is. So if we head back into IntelliJ and in our start function, what we'll want to do is we'll say belt manager equals to find object of type belt manager because we will only ever have one belt manager. Click save, head back into Unity, click play. And here we have our belt item moving across the conveyors. Thank you for watching episode one of Remake. I hope you found this tutorial useful and helpful. I'll be making more of these types of tutorials in the future. So if you find a game mechanic that you find interesting and would like to see how it's made, leave a comment down below or better yet, join our Discord. This has been Russ and I'll catch you next time.